How are you going, guys? A subscriber asked me to do an in depth tutorial using Achiro DX7 V. So, I will go over key features of DX7 V using the full version. Unlike the demo version, the full version can upload your own patches you made with your DX7. So, I can upload my PAR DX7 patches into the DX7 V. And that's how I was able to compare it against the DX7 Mark I and other DX7 VSTs. In this tutorial, I will cover key functions and FM parameters so that you get the basics covered and we can start making our own patches. If you like to know how good a Julia DX7V emulation is, you can watch the PAR DX7 accurate, detailed, and comprehensive shootout video. Using the DX7 Mark I as a benchmark, I compared many DX7 wannabes, including FM Player, Dixie, Dex, FM8, Achuria DX7V, and the Chrome hardware, Korg Volca FM. Click the link with an icon appearing on this video to see the shootout video. So, let's get started. When you click this menu, you can see that you can save your own patches as well as import and export your patches. Here, you can import your DX7 patches. Select Import and select the DX7 patch pack that you want to import and click OK. They put a lot of effort in organizing patches and be able to quickly search what you want. It's a great feature if you have thousands of DX7 patches. I don't have that many, so I don't necessarily need to have a powerful search capability. But here it is for people with lots of DX7 patches. You can categorize your patch for grouping depending on its sound like bass or brass. They also include those 128 DX7 factory patches. I hardly use them, but if you love those patches, you have a quick access to them. The next menu, all types, and this is a quick access menu to all patches with category. You can browse by base, brass, etc. But if you don't categorize your own patches, when imported, the default category is going to be key. So every year patch will be shown in that category. If you press the menu with the current patch selection, you will see a list of all patches. The arrow buttons allows you to access patches in sequence.
The first thing that you see is this DX7V virtual keyboard. At the top, you have a transport knob that can change key transports. When you change it, you need to look at the bottom left corner of the interface, which tells you the position of key transports. Tuning is the same as well. You need to look down at the bottom left corner to see how much you are making changes. This is a bit annoying since you have to keep looking up and down to find what you are doing. The amplitude modulation knob and the pitch modulation knob with modulation sense. Again, when you change them, you need to keep looking at the bottom left corner so that you can see how much you make changes. You have a volume slider. Next to it, there is a global low pass filter cutoff slider. So, when you press a key and move the slider up and down, you can cut off higher harmonics. The mode level slider is similar to the filter slider. You get more harmonics when you move it up. The carrier envelope slider controls attack and decay as well as release. Put it to zero, you get a shorter envelope. Put it to max, then you get a longer envelope. The modulation envelope slider can make modulator envelopes shorter or longer. You can't tell the difference with a tube belt patch because the feedback isn't used. The same goes for the pitch envelope knob. I don't go into other functions here as I'm focusing on some design of Atura DX7V. So, Let's get into its FM engine. Click on the top right corner with double arrows pointing down to expand its interface for sound editing. So, this is Achuria DX7V interface. It looks futuristic and modern, but is it useful and helpful for better sound design? 
Let's find out. So, let's look at the left hand side of the interface. You have all operators showing only frequency and level and copy patterns. In order for you to access the tune, you need to select a single operator and view or change its value. When you click on the operator, a color changes and it shows other parameters. It's very different to text. You have to go through each operator for precise editing. For text, you can pretty much adjust everything and can see everything on a single interface. What you notice is that the frequency settings are very different to what you see on the DX7 and even DX. Let's look at operator 1. It says 1 and you also have 0, 0.00 next to it. Operator 1 ratio is supposed to be 1.00. So it's confusing to have 1 and 0, 0.00 at the same time. The next one is more confusing. Operator 2 ratio should be 3.50. But instead, you see 2, then 75.0. This is just so confusing. DX7V is not showing the absolute ratio value. Instead, you need to do quick math to multiply and add to get an answer. 2 is the base ratio. You need to multiply 2 by 75 to get 150. Then, you need to multiply that with 0.01. So, you get 1.50. Finally, you need to add 2, the base ratio, plus 1.50 to get the final absolute value of 3.50. So, this is just so confusing. I would say, this is probably the weakest part of DX7V. The way its display ratio is just not what I expect. I prefer text for more like using the actual DX7. Let's look at the right hand side. You see parameters from oscillator filter, out, global, envelope, oscilloscope, and digital to analog converter setting. For oscillator, you can assign various waveforms. you can invert the selected waveform. You can also individually assign pitch envelope to an operator.
to individually turn on and off, there is a switch button at the top. Each operator has its own filter and you can select a low pass, band pass mode. High pass. You have a cutoff and resonance. To individually turn on and off, there is a switch button at the top. Envelope is an interesting one. You can select and drag level and rate and adjust straight away. You can edit an envelope right here. You can change levels by moving each point up and down. You can change rates by moving each point left or right. This is an as accurate as you can get to see how the DX7 envelope is set. It shows how an envelope moves with time from pressing a key to releasing a key. So, when you press a key, you see a green dot moves with time. There is a level scaling tab that you can click and you can see how level scaling is set. So, let's compare to text. What's missing from Aturia DX7V? The whole point of going to software is to have a better interface than the original DX7 hardware. Many people complained about how difficult to see all parameters on the DX7 Mark I. DX really improved the interface by allowing you to see everything at a glance. It's basically the equivalent of the DX7 data sheet. Back when I started out in 1986, I used the DX7 data sheet all the time to learn more about the DX7 FM synthesis. Even today, I use it occasionally for brainstorming and experimenting for my creative sound design. So, to me, it's a bit step backward with the Aturia DX7V interface. You have to go through different tabs and drill down to see more details instead of showing everything at a glance, like the DX7 data sheet. 
X may not look as cool as DX7V, but it's better for beginners and DX7 users since its interface is much closer to the original DX7 and you can see pretty much everything at a glance for simpler and quicker sound design. Okay, so how do you check envelope parameters? Well, there's a tab at the top. When you click it, it will bring the envelope screen. You still need to go through each operator individually. One thing that DX7V is really good is that it's very easy to edit envelopes by adjusting envelope graphs directly. There is also a tab that allows you to change types of envelope that you want to use. You can select from DX7 type envelope with 8 parameters. You can select DADSR type envelope with 6 parameters. You can select a simple MSEG type envelope with pre-configured envelopes. You have a gate envelope. Saw up envelope, triangle envelope, and the decay envelope. When you select the MSEG envelope, you can loop it. Click loop and viola. Looping is quite simple. You can sync looping with tempo as well. There are also pitch and modulation envelopes that you can set in this tab. We are not covering them at this stage as we can have a separate topic to cover them. There is also keyboard rate scaling. One thing that is challenging is that, unlike DX7 or DEX, you don't have access to operator on-off buttons in every screen and tab. If you want to focus on certain operator and check their effect for the overall frequency modulation, then every time you need to click overview tab, then click on each operator that you want to on and off, then turn on and off the operator switch. 
it's not really a good FM synth interface. Let's look at the uh, FX tab. There are four empty slots, and you can select four different effects per patch. So, you can convert mono output into stereo output. So, this is the in-depth look at Achuria DX7V. Let's summarize what we discovered already. It's a modern and cool looking VST. Its envelope graphs are really good and very flexible for editing. Its functionality is more than the original DX7. And it has better DX7 emulation than other VSTs. But it has such very confusing frequency ratio. There are too many menus and you will be going back and forth and there is no single glance view and editing. The overall interface is not as efficient as other VSTs such as text. Despite over 30 years of gaps, it still cannot keep up with the original DX7 hardware. We will continue the in-depth tutorial and start making new patches based on the famous DX7 factory patch. Subscribe to PartyX7 channel for more DX7 demos and tutorial videos. See you later!